Hey, Zillstar. In this video, I would like to share with you a little trick that I have learned for the tick. This is something that I've learned just recently, and I wanted to share it with you because it might give you a better way to create the tick depending on the zills that you are using. I traditionally have used fairly large zills with fairly deep rims, but recently I purchased a beautiful pair of Soroyan Grecians in silver, the large Grecians, which are these beauties here. And I found that when I went to play with them, my ticks sucked. <laughs> the ticks didn't work. And I was so confused. And after playing with this a bit and then taking some classes with the amazing Lauren Cecchio, I learned another way to create the tick. And I'm going to show that to you today so that no matter how you're playing, what you're playing, or which zills you're playing, you can have a tick that is going to come out cleanly every time. So first let's review quickly the way I traditionally teach a tick and the way that I play a tick, I will say still 90% of the time. And that is that I fold in my thumb zill till it touches the palm of my hand. And then I bring that second zill, my middle finger zill over on top of it perpendicularly. So essentially the rim of my bottom zill is sitting inside the bell of the top zill, like a little hat, yeah, and I bring that zill down using my fingers only, my thumb is stationary, and that for most of my sets of zill, most, I say most, not all, <laughs> works great. And I get a nice, clean, clear tick, 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 tick. Then I bought these beauties and I put them on, and this is what happened. Uh huh, yeah, it's like a thud, thud thud, thud, thud. So that was less than desirable, right? And I actually even went ahead and sewed these zills. I sewed these elastics on the inside, but you see, I cut them really, really, really short uh, in an attempt to figure out why my ticks were always turning out as a thud. Turns out it doesn't matter how short I cut them or even if I sew it on the outside, which is the way that I am now sewing my zill elastics, uh, it's not gonna make a difference because this bell, is so shallow. Look at how small this bell is, right? So I'm talking about the difference between the rim of the sill, the height of the rim, and the height of the bell is pretty darn small compared to this. This is my Gawazi in bronze. You'll notice that the height of the bell here is a lot taller. And so that height is what's allowing my zill on the inside to connect with the rim and not with the elastic, which you can see on my Gawazis, they're still sewn the old way. And I actually have quite a bit of elastic showing on the inside of there. So this should totally get in the way of my tick, but it does not because of the depth of the bell, right? So let me show you now using this, um, using these Grecians, how I learned from Lauren to create a tick. This is the way she creates a tick always and hadn't you know, I don't think she uses the other methodology necessarily. And so this works really well if you have zills that have a slightly less deep bell. And also if you're playing smaller zills that don't easily fold in to the palm of your hand quite as well, I think this might be another good method for creating the tick sound. So what we're gonna do instead of creating the little hat and coming straight down onto the zill, I'm gonna think about taking the thumb zill to the outside edge of the top symbol. And I'm connecting the rim to like almost the rim, sort of the, the inside edge of the bell. I'm connecting here and creating the tick. So now it's a lot less fingers only, but I'm getting a thumb and a finger and they're kind of chomping together a bit, but I feel like my thumb is doing more of the action. So now I can create that tick nice and cleanly without concern for what my elastic might do and whether or not my elastic is in the way. And then that being said, you can use that tick for any set of zills, right? That's gonna work for, I believe, all of them. I haven't come across a pair of zills yet that did not allow me to tick in that manner, but I don't have all the zills yet, yet, yeah. So if I'm ticking in this way, I'm gonna think about that thumb zill once again, coming to the outside rim of the upper zill and both the thumb and the fingers actioning a bit to create this sound, right? So here's your other tick. It might not happen on the Grecian, so beware. 
oh, I'm having good luck today. <laughs> and then the secondary tick, the second method. To create a nice clean tick using this other outer rim method, I find that my pinky sets down on the top of my zill a little bit extra to give a little push. I feel like when I'm coming straight down with the top zill for my little Mexican hat tick, <laughs> it's mostly, it's like most of my fingers, it's that middle finger and the two on either side that do the majority of the action. But then when I switch to this tick, I feel like definitely my pinky and my index or my ring finger get to do a little bit more of the work because of the angle that the zill is coming in at. Yeah, so feel free if your zill is large enough for your pinky to rest on it. Go ahead and rest that pinky there. One, because you want to muscle the sound for the tick. And two, because that pinky can help push the zill towards the thumb. Yeah. So let's go ahead and just for fun, alternate between those two types of ticks if you're able to with the zills that you're wearing. If only one of the type of tick works with the zills, just go ahead and stick with that one for now. Or you can put on two sets of zills and see what happens. Yeah. So we're going to do... Uh, do I call it tick one and tick two? Like thing one and thing two, yeah? So we'll go one E and a two E and a three E and a four, switch one E and a two E and a three E and a four. And I would like to invite you to do it right lead for both first and then left lead. We'll continuously alternate those, yeah? Five, six, Right hand first, and one E and a two E and a three E and a four. Left lead. Tick two. Left. Again, one. Left lead. Two, right lead. Left lead. One more time. Nice work. So I would love to hear from you, which of these ticks works best for the zills that you use? Or do you have zills that work with both ticks? Which one is the one that is more comfortable for your hands? And do you think you could incorporate both of them into your finger symbol playing? Remember, if you've enjoyed this video, I would love it if you would give it a thumbs up and subscribe so that I can send you brand new belly dance content every single week. I always look forward to dancing and making music with you. So I'll see you on the dance floor soon.